And back with us again, marketing and branding expert, Dr. John Tantillo, an applied research psychologist. Great to see you both, Allison and John. So, is this like the new Coke situation, John? <laughs> you know, they were all worried about Pepsi and the taste of the next generation. They didn't really have an equivalent product. They were worried about those taste tests. The Cola War started, but Coke got a lesson. You can't fool your consumer. They know what you're up to, don't they? They certainly do. And uh, the problem with the new Coke is it was the brand that uh, real Coke lovers dislike. And uh, that was not a, a very, very good thing. And the issue I think that we're alluding to in this segment about uh, the Biden team being the new Coke is that uh, this might be the cabinet that really nobody wants. Yeah, nobody wants this cabinet. I mean, you got the progressive wing of the party. They're looking for the future. Joe Biden, Allison, is clearly focused on the past. You know what was interesting, too, about the whole new Coke situation? They had to come out with the original formula, the classic scripts. So they had to go all the way back. I can only imagine how much that cost. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, a ton of money, right? So, yeah, the new flat, the Coke, it fell flat on consumers, right? And it's falling flat on a lot of the progressives because they're not happy with Joe Biden's cabinet pick. So, you know, a lot of people are saying that this is the Obama administration 2.0. He's kind of repackaging it. And it is just like the, the new Coke, right? They're taking what they had before, adding a little bit to it, maybe trying to change it up a bit. But a lot, they're putting a lot of people that were in the swamp, as a lot of folks say, back in the swamp. And people aren't happy with it. And John, you know, the whole thing with, with Coke and Pepsi back at the time, people liked the sweeter taste of Pepsi. I guess that's what I read anyway. But it's really about authenticity here and something you always remind us of. You can't fake it. You have to be authentic at the end of the day. Oh, uh, most certainly. And uh, I had a laugh at the lieutenant governor uh, talking about branding, uh, trying to teach uh, the person that knows, instructed all politicians about branding, and that was Donald Trump. I mean, uh, Trump's, say what you want about Trump, but he's a branding genius. He is. He's a savant when he comes to this. And, you know, th back then, Allison, Pepsi, I think that, that was the whole Michael Jackson thing. They'd given him all this money. He was doing the commercials. His hair caught on fire, but that didn't stop yeah. him. You know, Pepsi was on the march then. You know, Coke didn't really have an answer, and they tried to be something they weren't. And that's a le that should be a lesson for everyone. Absolutely. As you mentioned, it's all about being authentic. I mean, Coke had a good thing going for them. Obviously, their competition was Pepsi, so they tried to change things up. But when they did, it didn't work because people wanted the original Coke, which makes sense of why they went back to the original recipe. And I was reading an article today, and a Pepsi gave all of their employees a day off when this happened because they're like, great, we're winning here because Coke has made the biggest mistake that they could ever make. Yeah, well, we know Joe Biden gives his staff a lot of days off. They call those lids so early on. But he, we see Joe Biden on the screen right now. Uh, speaking of this topic, he's uh, officially nominating or, I guess, announcing his choice for the next secretary of defense. Um, so this continues, again, you know, sort of a guy well-known. Uh, we talked about him here yesterday. Uh, so that's what's happening with Joe Biden. You see him on the screen here. But again, you know, we talked about this earlier, John. Bernie Sanders talking about Democrats blowing this whole COVID relief bill. You know, he's obviously part of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, not happy with these types of cabinet selections. So they're going to use those types of issues, shaming other Democrats to really push their agenda. And this is another thing they don't like. They don't like these cabinet appointments. We talked about uh, Tony Blinken and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar getting mad about that. Not just because he's an Obama administration official, but ostensibly because he's Jewish. Uh, yeah, well, the problem with the Democrats is that they have rebranded themselves out of the working class electorate. And they're not your mother or father's uh, Democratic Party. I mean, I was a former Democrat. I don't recognize the Democratic brand any longer. It's the graduate school brand. It's not the people's brand. Yeah, it's the brand of coastal elites. And, you know, it's like when you go to a hamburger restaurant, you expect a hamburger. And if the waiter brings you out French food, Allison, you're going to be like, what is this? Even though it might be great, but you might not. You, you don't want that. You didn't go there for that. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, what John said it was completely accurate. And, and that's why we saw them lose some seats in the House, because the word socialism kept coming up. And a lot of Democrats do not want progressives. They don't want socialists. And that explains probably why Joe Biden is picking the people who he's picking and staying away from the folks who Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and AOC want. Yes, uh, safe picks. But also, you know what mm -hmm. happens with those safe picks? You wind up uh, offending a lot of other people as well, trying to be too safe. Allison, John, great to see you again. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week for another installment of Brand Power.